Okay, so Aldoa for cervical spine. We're going to start on the feet. And I'm just going to get you to feel your perfect footprint. Feel your perfect footprint on the floor. Feel your toes, the balls of your feet. Feel your heels, inner and outer. And as you inhale, sweep your awareness up with the breath from the feet up through the legs. And as you breathe your next breath in, keep sweeping up higher, up through the pelvis, through the inner organs. Keep sweeping up on the next breath through into the chest. Feeling your breastbone and sweeping up into the face and the head. Feeling the ears and the top of the head. And feeling your arms hanging down. Feel the weight of gravity. If you can sense into how the weight of gravity is putting pressure on your body, but how the strength of your body is lifting you up through gravity. Good. So let's start with um, balancing on the right foot, just a little sort of gentle balancing, and we'll keep that right knee a little bit soft, and then we'll lift the left knee to about hip height, and we'll point and flex and point and flex the left ankle. And letting it happen more from the ankle joint rather than from the toes. Pointing and flexing. Good. And then resting your left foot down on the mat. Find your left footprint on the mat. And let's take that right knee up. And pointing and flexing from the ankle. Point and flex. Still maintaining the awareness of the breastbone, the crown of the head. And then we'll let that right foot print come back down to the mat. Great. Okay. And a roll down. So we want to at least get the spine, it's rolling each time we practice. So we'll let the head start to come down and forward and let the rest of the spine fall forward. Like it's trickling down like a big waterfall. Just letting it go nice and easy, taking as many breaths as you need, and then coming back up, unrolling. And we'll do that a couple of times. And then on your next roll down, we're gonna do the dropping the pelvis. So we're gonna tuck the tail under. And keeping that pelvis fixed, we're gonna roll down maybe a little more slowly, mindfully, and only letting that pelvis go when you reach into the low back and you feel like you can't roll down any further unless you let that pelvis go. And then same thing on the way back up. You're gonna engage through the pelvis first, dropping the tailbone down and then slowly rolling all the way back up. Good, and always listening to your body. All right, great. Um, let's come down to the mat and have a seat. And we're gonna do a few roll up and downs from a seated position. So I want you to bring your soles together, the soles of the feet. So you have a diamond shape inside the legs. And then as you inhale, we're going to lift through the crown Exhale and roll yourself back all the way to the mat. And then engaging the pelvic floor as you inhale, you're gonna roll back up. And then exhale, rolling forward, head going over the feet. Yes, and then inhale, coming back up to seated. And then exhale, rolling back again to the floor. Good, and then as you inhale, coming back up to seated. And exhaling, rolling forward again, engaging the pelvic floor. Inhaling back up to the center. Exhale, rolling back one more time. And then inhale, rolling back up to seated. 
Good, and then we'll take that left hand towards the floor and raise the right arm overhead for a side bend. So we're gonna side stretch those ribs and let your left arm sort of slide out easily. And you're always listening to your body. So you always wanna know what is happening. You never wanna go into a place like a, a, a zone of alarm is what I will call it, where you're like suddenly feeling disconnected and not aware of the sensations. So you wanna be aware of the sensations. And then we'll switch sides, taking the other arm down towards the floor, raising the right side, breathing into the right ribs. And coming back up to center, let's come forward onto the hands and the knees. <clears throat> And so we're going to move that spine from side to side again. So I want you to take your right ear and the right side of your hip closer together. And then the opposite way. And imagine your rib cage like an accordion, opening and closing as you move from side to side. And then once you come back to the center, let your hips fall back down to your heels. And keep your arms stretched forward. Take an inhale breath. As you exhale, walk your fingertips a little bit forward. And as you inhale again, exhale and let your fingertips walk a bit more forward. One more time. On your next exhale, walking your fingertips a tiny bit more forward. And then we're gonna slowly take the arms towards the right side while the hips stay on the heels. And you're gonna breathe into the side of the rib cage. Your hands are on the floor. Looking to move to the point where you feel sensation, something's happening but it's not out of your control. Breathing through the nose, we're gonna take the arms and hands to the other side, keeping the hips still over the heels. And as you're breathing, Someone back here, we're good, perfect, okay. Good, and then let's come back up to the hands and knees. So breathing through the nose helps the nervous system to regulate itself. So we have one side of the nervous system that has the foot on the accelerator and one side on the brake. So we wanna find that balance by breathing through the nose. All right, so coming onto the hands and knees, Let's take that rib cage like it's a barrel and you're gonna move it around in a circle. So you're gonna move it to the left, up towards the ceiling, down to the right and down towards the floor while your knees and hands stay fixed on the mat. So you're just doing this like big circle with the rib cage. And then we're going to go the opposite way. A couple of times. Great. And perfect. Let's come back to seated for a moment. And then make sure you can come down to your mat. And we're going to lie down. And I want you to make sure that you have enough space behind your head so you can lengthen your arms without touching maybe the wall or, or the couch or whatever's behind you. So you wanna have enough room to stretch your arms back. And if you know that when you have come to Eldoa classes that you 
benefit from having support under your legs a little bit. You can always rest your legs or feet while you're doing cervical spine aldoas on the chair or the, the edge of a couch or have them towards a wall. And you can always use that kind of prop system until you don't need it anymore. Okay, so let's begin with our C23. So as you lie on the floor, you're gonna keep your knees bent and your feet on the floor. And I want you to find your markers, your points of contact. So I want you to find your sacrum. I want you to find your low back ribs and find the back of the sternum. So the back of that breastbone is going to be a real connecting spot. And then let's take the pointer fingers to the occiput, the hollow place at the back of the skull, and find that spot. And gently lengthen, encouraging that occiput slightly back. So rather than folding the chin in, we let the occiput come back and it naturally drops the chin a little bit. So we want to find the longest position for our neck as possible. And then let your arms come down to your sides. And let's work the eyes for a moment. Let's look just with the eyeballs to the left and then to the right, and then to the left and to the right. Letting the eyes just roll without moving anything else. And then we'll take them up towards the top, looking up towards the eyebrows and looking down towards the cheeks and moving them up and down a few more times. And then let the eyes relax. And then we'll take the arms up towards the ceiling. We still have the feet flat on the floor. And without doing any rotations, let's just take those arms towards the ceiling and back down towards the floor up towards the ceiling, down towards the floor. Let's take those arms down by the side of the body. And I want you to now feel at your breastbone how connected the arms are to the breastbone, behind the breastbone. As you lift your arms up towards the head, feel that movement connecting all the way through your body at the back of the sacrum. So you're gonna move the arms up and down slowly a couple of times from the hips towards the ears and back, connecting to the breastbone. Okay, and then let's relax the arms down to the sides. And we're gonna take one more, do one more little thing to practice awareness. So I want you to draw back through the occiput and then relax. Draw back through the occiput and relax. So what's happening is you're drawing, reaching through the top of the head towards the short end of the mat behind you and then relaxing. Now as you're doing that, I want you to notice what's happening at the breastbone. Is it lifting and lowering? If you notice when you draw and reach through the crown of the head, if the breastbone is lifting, I want you to practice keeping that breastbone lowered down. So it's a very subtle thing that you'll be working on during the Eldoa exercise. Okay, so let's relax now and let's get ready for our C23. So with your feet flat on the floor, take your arms down by the sides. So your hands are gonna be at the side of your hips. And I want you to now reach the arms forward with your wrists flexed slightly externally rotating from your shoulders, and you're gonna push forward through the palms. And then let's take the knees up towards the chest. So we're gonna build this in layers. And for C23, we're gonna to start to look down with the eyeballs, and then engage your abs and start to lift yourself up till you find the bottom of your shoulder blades. So you're kind of doing, it feels like a abdominal crunch. 
and you're going to be pressing those palms forward, drawing back through the upper teeth, keeping the face fairly relaxed. You can't really take very deep breaths in this one, so take as many breaths as you need, not trying to take them too deeply. So you want to maintain this lift into the bottom of the shoulder blades. The more you draw your knees towards you, the harder it's going to feel. So you want to keep lifting and now pressing back through the middle of the neck. Keep reaching back now through the top of the neck, dropping the chin down a little bit more. Keep reaching the palms forward, looking down with the eyes. Last couple of breaths. Very slowly, let your arms soften and take your hands to the back of the head and then let yourself lower down and you can touch your feet down to the floor. All right. Take a couple of breaths here, relax and let everything get soft. So we're building intensity in the exercises and we are putting our body into fascial tension, but we're not trying to hold tension and be tense. So there's a, a big difference between um, creating this tensegrity and, and noticing the tensegrity in the body, but then being tense and rigid. So we're not trying to be tense and rigid, okay? Next one is uh, one vertebra down. So we're gonna start taking the feet off the floor, knees towards the chest again. And flexing the feet at the ankles and this time you're going to take your hands so they're just slightly below the outside of your knees at an angle and you're going to notice that at each angle the work will be different in your shoulders the work will be different through the neck and I want you to now lower your eyes and reach back through the crown of the head as you push the palms at that angle. We're gonna hold this for one minute. Breathing through your rib cage, feeling your ribs through the back and the sides. Reaching back through the crown of the head. Beautiful. Imagine your breastbone is reaching down. Imagine your tailbone is reaching away from those, from the crown of your head, creating more and more axial extension, as much length from the crown to the tail. If it feels right for you, you can just slightly lift the head about one centimeter and stretch the crown back a little bit more. Good. Beautiful. Keep reaching back through the top of the teeth. On your next exhale breath, you're going to soften your arms, relax the head back to the floor, and let your feet touch down. Good. Take a couple of breaths here. And let's move into our next one. Finding your anchor points, low back ribs, drawing back through the top of the head. Roll your eyes down and now reach your arms straight up to the ceiling. So they're moving straight up from the shoulders. Turn your arms outwards, flex back through the wrists. Good. And take a moment to not really intentionally stretch out the fingers and then stretch out through the fingers and then let the fingers kind of relax a little and stretch them out and just become aware of that tension of that tightness, the nerves are communicating to your brain how much tension there is, how much tightness. So you wanna be just aware of that. Okay, so flexing back through the wrists, opening out through the fingers, let's start to reach up as if you're trying to touch the ceiling. Good, and you can do this one leg at a time Keep your sacrum anchored. 
keep your breastbone down and take one knee towards the chest and then the other one and flex your feet at the ankles. And here we go for a minute. Make sure your knees and your feet are about hip width apart. Good. And as you press up towards the ceiling, notice if your arms start to kind of glide towards the back. You wanna make sure that they're going straight upwards. And you're gonna find your imaginary Adam's apple and draw downwards and then lengthen back. So reaching always through the top of the head. Feel that the breastbone is reaching downwards. Let that little smile play on the corners of your mouth. So you're moving, breathing through the nose. As you feel even more relaxed internally, you can stretch more for the last two breaths. And on your next exhale, you're gonna soften your arms, let your head come down and let your feet touch down to the floor. Take another couple of breaths. And for the next one, let's start by bringing the knees towards the chest. So you know what it feels like to come into the exercise or the sort of starting position a little bit differently, coming up with the knees first, sometimes coming up with the knees after, and making sure the knees and feet are the same distance apart. Good. And now let's take the arms back up towards the ceiling and find your breastbone. Imagine it's like this, this touch point, this like a circle. And I want you to feel that everything happening is connected to that breastbone, connected down through the sacrum, everything is connected. And so let's start to take those arms 45 degrees back towards the head. So you're not quite to the floor, you're halfway down to the floor. Now this is gonna be a lot of um, more work for your shoulders. So always be mindful of how much your body is able to do any given day. Good. And giving yourself little external rotations through the shoulders as you can, as you feel your body is able to, making those movements on your exhale breaths. Good. Drawing your knees towards your chest, pressing down through the tailbone, pressing down through the breastbone, reaching back through the crown. Make sure your eyes roll down to look towards your thighs. Keeping your feet flexed, wrists flexed. Open out through those fingers, feeling that fascial tension. Good. See if you can one more time press back through those palms as you anchor down through the breastbone. And then very softly relax your arms, softly relax your legs, and relax the spine. Feet touch down, take a couple of breaths. Okay, so our next one, we're gonna get ready. We're gonna get ready. This time the head is gonna stay on the floor to start. And we're gonna take the arms down beside the hips. So it's like the position we did at the very beginning, but this time we don't roll off the floor. So we're gonna take the hands down beside the hips and they're gonna come a little bit off the floor externally rotated with the rest flex back. Good. So your hands are gonna be down by the sides of the hips, arms alongside the body. Kind of hugging into the body, yes. Great. And then as you start to push your palms forward, stretch and reach the crown of the head back, taking one knee at a time towards the chest. Knees and feet the same width apart. Flexing back through the wrists, flexing back through the ankles. 
Letting that little smile be on the mouth. Lengthening back, reaching the upper teeth back. That might be kind of a, a weird one to locate in the body. But the more you practice the awareness and the intention of going inside, the easier it becomes to locate and move your body in these very subtle ways. Good. If it feels right for you, lift the head just a tiny bit off the floor and keep reaching the crown back, reaching the occiput back. Good, feeling everything connected to the back of the breastbone, lengthening the tailbone away from the crown. Good, last couple of breaths here. Make sure the arms are in close to the body. And then on your next exhale, slowly soften the arms, support your head to come down if it's off the floor, and then let your feet touch down. The thing about lifting the head off the floor, it can feel pretty intense. So if it, if it feels too intense to have it off the floor for the whole posture or for half, half the length of time, you can always practice a little lift for a couple seconds and then slowly lower it down, but trying to maintain the length until your neck strengthens and you can hold it up for longer. So you can always work your way up to holding for a longer period of time. Okay, let's do our last one, our C71. So let's take the arms up towards the ceiling. And now rotate the arms externally, flex the wrists back, open out through the fingers. And you know when we're seated and we're doing one of those mid-thoracic postures and the arms are in a V? You want the arms in a V for this one. So let's take them out into a V. Good. And lower them down towards the floor. So you're going to take them up over the head. Yes, into a V. Perfect. Looking down with your eyes, let's lengthen the neck the cervical spine as much as possible and one leg at a time take the knees towards the chest flex the feet at the ankles and making sure that your hands are not actually touching the floor they're just hovering and here we go breathing through the nose making sure that you're not clenching through the jaw feeling like all of these connected tissues on the inside, through the whole inside of the neck, through the whole roof of the mouth, through the brain, everything, all of those tissues are lengthening back in space. From the breastbone down, everything is reaching the opposite way. If you draw the knees a little tiny bit closer and lift the head a little bit off the floor, you'll notice it gets a little more intense. You're gonna feel, feel it in the fascial body myofascial body so holding it there a little bit more external rotation through those arms flexing the wrists open out the fingers staying really calm with your breath right through the nose last two on your next exhale you're going to soften your arms relax the head to the floor and let your feet touch down relaxing the whole spine taking a couple of deep breaths here Good. And letting yourself roll over to one side, making your way back up, first to seated, checking out how it feels through your neck and shoulders. Making sure you drink lots of water. And remember, you can always finish your day with your L5S1 at any time or before bed. <laughs> 